Hello and welcome uh, to a tutorial on how to use your you know computer to to plot functions and graphs. Usually, you know, when I was at school and, and, and I'm still at school, I have one of these in my pockets and these are what we call Texas Instruments graphing calculators or, you know, there are other calculators such as, you know, manufactured by other companies. Uh, the one over here is, I think, I think it's HP maybe. Yeah, that's HP. And going a bit below, you have Casio. And I, what I love about the calculators is, especially these graphing calculators, is that they allow you to plot out functions to see what a function is on the screen as opposed to just look at a function as its uh, sort of variables but there is a problem and, and oftentimes you know I found myself really frustrated by this thing that if you have say two three sort of graphs that you would like to plot on your graphing calculator then 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 they all become so mushy and become really sort of all together and you, and you can't sort of you can't tell apart one from the other and that that becomes a really pain uh, that becomes really painful to, to sort of understand what's going on and recently I found that there are a lot of computer softwares that you can use to do the same thing that you do on these expensive graphing calculators much faster uh, with much with many more colors and you know you can change the size you can zoom in zoom out really quickly do a lot of other interesting stuff uh, which I'll cover you know, in this tutorial uh, and, 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 and sort of the upcoming uh, tutorials this graph that I have on on my left maybe let me zoom out it's a bit too, it's a bit too big 50% that sounds that looks right so this is like a parabola that I plotted out in a, in a program called Mathematica. And the really cool thing is I just had, you know, told the program, okay, look at this, look at this function and give me a graph. And, you know, this happens to be the graph. And the really cool thing is I can, I can, I mean, this is a really zoomed in graph. So it's, it's plotted only between negative 10 and 10. And, and you can see the y values over here. Uh, I can zoom in, zoom in, zoom out further if I had wanted to, which I couldn't have done with sort of the graphing calculators, uh, which I have used so far and I, and, and I still use, but, but I love the computer software because it's so much fast and so much easy to, to do a lot of graphing. I found like you know, like you know, I was, so I googled you know what software to use, and I found like leading in the market in the industry, in schools and in, in sort of uh, businesses and research places, they use Wolfram Mathematica. That's one sort of program for graphing, for doing any sort of you know computational work on uh, on the computer. The other one happened to be Maple MATLAB. Sorry. I mean, my maple soft is over here and maple is quite close to my heart because I mean I, I, I live in Canada so and maple is a Canadian company so I guess uh, I'm a bit biased towards uh, their uh, software but I, I love Mathematica I love MATLAB I love the sort of the open source Python based program that does the same thing as maple soft the same thing as MATLAB the same thing as uh, Wolfram Mathematica uh, but honestly, I found Mathematica to be a bit easier to, to use uh, compared to the other three. So maybe, you know, that's why, that's why I began with Mathematica. Uh, so, and, and I wanted, this, wanted these tutorials to be on Mathematica. And maybe in the near future, I'll cover MATLAB and I'll cover Maple and I'll cover Sage. Because all of them are the same thing and just use different notations. Uh, but the, the functions, the graphs the way you sort of get your work done is the same. It's like, well, if you know Microsoft Word and then you switch to, you know, the Mac pages, uh, the, the, the sort of, 
it's just a different interface, maybe a bit of different buttons and icons, but they get the same thing done. This is the graph that I had done. And maybe I should open up Mathematica and then show it to you. How did I do it? So let me, oh, oh by the way, uh, just to go off at a tangent, if you didn't see, I'm using Photoshop uh, to sort of make this tutorial. And I just put all these pictures here. So, so if you're curious in how I'm sort of making this video on my Mac, uh, it's just uh, Photoshop uh, and put these pictures on. I'm using a different layer for writing stuff. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And the screen recording software that I'm using is uh, has has come has come with the Mac OS I think um, hmm, Mac OS 10 Lion, and uh, it's just the QuickTime screen recording feature uh, that I'm using to sort of record my screen. Uh, so no external software. Uh, okay, I digress, but. Mathematica, where are you? Okay, over here. So I opened up Mathematica now, uh, and let me pretty much plot the function I had, plot the graph that I showed you over here. And Mathematica takes inputs, and inputs are basically sort of instructions you tell the program. So the first sort of instruction is plot. And plot takes arguments inside these uh, square brackets. An argument is something that, I mean, by definition, it's a term. Argument means argument is something that's passed on to a, uh, an instruction. So to the plot instruction, it takes a couple of arguments. The first argument is, well, what am I graphing? The graph over here was, you know, a parabola graph in its perfect square form. So let me just type that in. There's two, two, mm, 0.5, x plus two, close bracket, to the power, Squared. Let me make sure my brackets are the same because I oftentimes I mess them up. So open bracket one, open bracket two, close bracket three, uh, close bracket two, close bracket one. Okay, good. So this, this sort of a entire thing is being squared. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, mm, close bra another bracket. Oh, and if you sort of remember, um, if you covered this already at school, I, I mean, I, I purposefully, you know, made it in, uh, expressed this uh, parabola in its perfect square form. Uh, and it allows me to sort of see, well, you know, oh, this graph is moves two units to the left. Oh, by the way, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about that later. I think I'm confusing you uh, by talking too much before actually drawing the thing. Okay. Zero, zero. That just looks right. Okay, two multiplied by this uh, thing, 0 0.5 x plus two to the power two plus 100. Let me check if that's right. Let me check if that's right. Two, 0 0.5, the entire thing squared plus 100. Yeah, that just looks right. Okay. So this that, that's a, a parabola. Uh, good. So that's the first argument I gave plot. The second argument is well, what values will x take? What values will x take, the variable? That's what I get to define here. I put this put this squiggly bracket, then I have x, comma. Let's see, hmm. Well, this one was graphed between uh, negative 10 and 10. So I'm just gonna do the same thing over here. Negative 10 and 10. Close squiggly bracket. And that's it. So plot two arguments and now, and oh, by the way, uh, now if I press enter, pretty much, you know, the cursor jumped from this line to this line. So in Mathematica, uh, it's shift enter 
shift enter to sort of tell Mathematica, well, you know, this is the instruction I wrote. Now it's your turn to do the instruction. So I will now do that. Shift, enter, and oh, there's a graph. Okay. And oh, by the way, uh, it tells us it's I n I n's for input one fifteen, and that's because you know I had you know before I sort of started this tutorial I, you know, I was messing around with Mathematica, so uh, I I did a couple of graphs to sort of uh, refresh my own memory. Uh, so one fifteen means I, I might have done you know one fifteen hundred and fifteen types of instruction inputs I, before you know I did this thing over here, and and output is okay so. Instruction and that was executed to give me this output one output 115 Okay, and to make this graph a bit larger. I can just hover over it click and This gives me the square with sort of uh, anchor points that I can drag the Really cool thing is Mathematica holds these uh, aspect ratio or the proportions of the graph so I can click the side pull it sideways and still you know the graph is maintaining its it's uh, proportionality. Uh, make it a bit larger. Okay, so you might have you may have noticed a couple of things. Well, it's the same graph as the one we saw over here, right? If you take a close look at it, maybe I'll I'll pause here. But wait, this this is like. I, I mean, this graph is 100, I mean, this is a parabola, which is 100 units shifted to the up. Uh, but over here, that doesn't look like it has been shifted 100 units to the up. But this point here is 100, but I, I want that to be zero. And, I, well, a couple of other things, too. The background is pink. Over here, the background is white. And uh, I kind of see this graph to be much more stretched out, right? Sideways, like it's it 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 got a horizontal. Horizontal, I think. Uh, hmm, what should it be? It's horizontal stretch or compression. Zero point five, so it's a horizontal compression by a factor of no no horizontal stretch by a factor of two, uh, and I, this doesn't look like as as if as if, that is, as, as, if, as if it was stretched horizontally by a factor of of two. Uh, why is that the case? Because I actually, when I made when I made the graph you saw uh, over here, I, I I had also put other commands inside the plot function, other arguments, which I didn't hear. So in the next video, uh, I I will do those and, and and essentially show you how this graph became this, and also do some other graphs besides parabola. Maybe do some trigonometry graphs. Uh, polynomial graphs, ra irrational, no, no, irrational function graphs, rational function graphs, and do some cool stuff like compare one with the other, and uh, just get a feel for how to do any type of graphs on on Mathematica. So see you in the next video.